Things like this always seem to happen at the worst time. Electronics, love them, use them all the time. But when they don't work, a big problem. Here we are, special event. We have something in the oven that needs a temperature probe. This is a great little device. I'll post it down below if you're interested. So I go to turn it on, doesn't work. Open up the back battery compartment and absolutely the worst thing, battery corrosion. I'm pretty sure I can fix this. And if I'm posting this video, I've been successful. So there's a couple of things that I think will be very helpful. Number one, I'll show you how to repair a corroded electronic device. Number two, I'll talk about how you can prevent this from happening again. The steps are pretty easy to fix this and also to prevent it, that you'll just sit there and go, why didn't I think of that before? But you'll always remember it from here on out. So let's go to a top-down shot and get started on this repair. First thing to do is to take the components that you're not fixing and put them over to the side, although there is some battery corrosion here. This is just a firm toothbrush. You can get a whole bunch of them for about a dollar at any big box store. Picks, a pair of tweezers, ear cleaners. We use them for all sorts of projects. Because you're dealing with caustic chemicals, I use safety glasses and gloves. Put the gloves on and we'll get started. Do you need gloves? Probably not a bad idea because the last thing you want to do is get some of these chemicals from the battery on your hands and then you go rub your eyes or whatever and that's not good. So I want to put the glasses on. But I also have a four point screwdriver that's kind of helpful. One of the things we're doing more and more is we're not using one-time batteries. We're using rechargeable batteries. Here's an Amazon one. They're relatively inexpensive. They cost a couple cents to charge. Post them down below if you're interested. With rechargeable batteries, we use these all the times in all sorts of devices, and we've never had one go bad on us. Oh, and then we have some plastic safe multi-purpose precision lubricant for electronics. Again, I'll post these all, all down below. This is the one I use, and it's a relatively small container, probably a lifetime supply, or certainly five to 10 years, depending on what you're doing with electronics, cleaning them up. So let's get in here and carefully extract the battery. Ah, oh, man, what a mess. This is not unusual for this brand. We used to like this brand, but we actually had a whole bunch just go bad on us without even being used way before the expiration date. Dispose of that correctly. Now, to keep that from happening, there's a couple things you can do. Store your electronics without a battery. But things like flashlights, when you need them, you really want to have the battery there and ready to go. The way we end up storing most of our flashlights is we just take the battery and reverse it. That way, when we need it, the battery's in place and it won't turn on and it won't corrode. Here's a flashlight where we even had the smallest amount of corrosion. That's going to affect the ability for the flashlight to work. So we've got two examples here. Clean this all out carefully. I'm just going to kind of show you what's in there. What a mess. I'm using looks like a cafeteria tray. I'll post this down below. These are great for all sorts of projects that you might be working on in your house. Crafts, all that stuff. We got them for the kids when they were younger. but They're really good, as you can see, for containing messes. What you don't want to do is get it inside the electronics right here. You want to try to avoid that as much as possible. But sometimes you can slide that out, but you got to be careful because if it's soldered in place, you'll just break it and then you're toast. All right, so that's all stuff you don't want. So we'll just carefully move that to the corner here. Get that out of the way. So the first thing you need to do is get a battery that you know works, put it in its place and see if that's going to do it. All right, here we go. That's not going to do it. So we're off to the next step. Got this lubricant, and you'll be really tempted to go in here and spray it, but it's kind of like WD-40. Even with this little nozzle, you'll get way too much in there. What you can do is you can actually spray it on here, and that's all you need to do. Shake it up a little bit, and then you can try cleaning off like the corroded piece here. Let's see if that works for you. Yeah, that's getting it off pretty good. Just that simple action. 
This was gold coated. Don't know if that's going to be a factor. So let's go in here and see if we can clean up this just with that little bit of spray on the Q-tip. Let's try a battery. Nope, not going to happen. This isn't going to be an easy case. Spray the toothbrush just a little bit. I do it over there. And then that will get in where the Q-tip couldn't. And then we'll try the same thing here on this area. Just take your time. You just don't want to put a lot of that fluid in there, but it, boy, I tell you what, it's resurrected so many things for me. And then just take your a paper towel and just kind of dry it off a little bit. If you can't get the paper towel into the compartment, another thing you can do is just use some compressed air. Now that's all clean, we'll take a battery, put in a flashlight, twist it down and see if we can get to work. And look at that. Success. Shut it off. And now when I store this flashlight with the battery in it, I'll just reverse it like this and it won't turn on. But it's going to be ready for me next time I want to use it. Let's get back to our little challenge project. Get a battery, stick it in here. Still not working. So guess what? We got to go inside. This next step is not for the faint of heart, but if it's the difference between fixing it and not fixing it, we're going to give it a shot. Find the right screwdriver. This is an, yet another reason why this tray is so good because it captures all the screws. Drop that on the floor. You may never see it again. Let's open this up and see what we got going on here. Any corrosion? We got buttons that came out. I don't see any corrosion there and it's fairly intact. There doesn't seem to be any corrosion or chemical dust anywhere in here. I'm really sure why this isn't working. A little bit of corrosion dust, so I'm just gonna tap it out a little bit. There's a piece right there. Spray all the inside. Ooh, see, this is what happens. You get that little cold spray, never good for electronics. All right, so looks fairly intact. Don't want to take these buttons off. Let's look at all the switches, make sure the switches seem, seem okay. Yeah. You want to be careful, these are really small cords. All right, open this up. I don't see any dust or anything in there. That doesn't look like corrosion, but we'll clean it up anyway. I think that's just the speaker. It's also interesting to come in here and take a look at everything. It's fairly clean. Alright, so we'll put it back together. This piece right here will typically be the problem area for any kind of electronics where the corrosion was. Sometimes you gotta pull in the big guns. There must have still been some corrosion on the springs. So I have a little set of brass brushes. These are actually for a Dremel tool. And I just went in there and went to town on it. Spun it around, hit it a couple times with the spray. And guess what? Let's test it out and see. Bingo! Success! So what are they saying, Ghostbusters? We have the tools, we have the talent. And now you've got the repair. And this device is back in action. And now that I know that it works, I'm going to take the battery out, reverse it. It's not going to turn itself on. And now I can store it with a battery ready to go. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in all sorts of repairs of technology, electronics, home repairs, designs of all kinds, making and breaking things, I even do costumes cosplay and props. Check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what repair you're going to see.